Hi everyone, this is a video tutorial for how to handle a titration problem. So if we look at the example in front of us, you'll see that we have a weak acid and a strong base together. This is not a buffer solution, so we cannot at this point use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So what we're going to do is look at our major species. Major species means it's what is primarily in the solution. So if we look at our weak acid here, it is mostly stuck together. So it's mostly nitrous acid. It's not mostly H plus and nitrite separate from each other. So from this, our contribution is HNO2. This is a strong base, meaning it's going to fully dissociate. So we have Na plus and hydroxide. And because we're always talking about aqueous solutions, water is also a major species. When you look at the major species list, what you need to do is figure out what has priority. So if we look at this listing here, we have a strong base. The strong substances always have priority. So the star just means priority. So your thought pattern is this. Strong substances react to completion, which means you need to do stoichiometry. And stoichiometry is in terms of moles. So that would mean that step one calculation would be the hydroxide reacting with. So now you have to consider what is hydroxide going to react with. It's a strong base, so it wants an acid. Na plus would not be a good candidate. So we're left with these two. Hydroxide is going to react with the best acid in solution, which would be your nitrous acid. So this will react with HNO2 to completion, forming water, and NO2 minus. Once again, we have to be in terms of moles. So we're going to do kind of a modified ice chart. So modified meaning here, it's going to be the initial moles. Then delta represents the change. This here is going to be based on your limiting reactant. And then we're going to have our final solution. So if we look at the information above, we can solve for moles of hydroxide and we can solve for moles of nitrous acid. So volume times molarity would give me one mole of nitrous acid, and here we would have 0.4 moles of hydroxide. We don't care at all about water because it's a liquid, and we don't have any initial starting concentration of our nitrate. So because there's a one to one mole ratio, you can directly compare the number of moles and determine which one is limiting. Because there are fewer moles of hydroxide, it is the limiting reactant. So we're going to subtract 0.4 moles. Once again, 1 to 1 mole ratio, so we also get rid of 4 moles there. And now we have to keep in mind we're going to be forming, hence the positive, 0.4 moles of nitrate. We add that row up. We have no more hydroxide. We have 0.6 moles of nitrous acid, and we have 0.4 moles of nitrite. Now what you need to do is look in the solution and see what's remaining. So if you notice here, we have some weak acid and we have its conjugate base in the same solution. We have a weak conjugate pair. And when you have a weak conjugate pair in the same solution, it is a buffer. So then our second step here would be to determine the pH. Because it's a buffer, you can use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, which is pH is equal to the pKa plus the log of the base over the acid, which would be the negative log of the Ka provided 4.0 times 10 to the minus 4, plus the log of your concentration of base or amount of base, 0.4, over 0.6, the amount of acid. When you do that and solve, you wind up getting a pH equal to 3.22. And that is how you handle a titration that results in a buffer solution.